Ocular rosacea is a type of rosacea that affects the eyelids and can cause serious implications for the eye. So ocular rosacea is inflammation that causes redness, burning and itching of the eyes, and it often develops in people who have skin rosacea as well, which is a chronic skin condition that affects the face. Sometimes ocular or eye rosacea is the first sign that you may later develop the facial type of rosacea. And so in today's video, as a dry eye specialist, I'm gonna guide you through what ocular rosacea is and what can be done about it. Welcome back to Eye School with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so that you can have healthy, beautiful, and comfortable eyes. Give a little love tap on that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest tips and tricks I have for you because I have videos every single week and they're all about dry eye and beauty. So ocular rosacea primarily affects adults between the ages of 30 and 50. It seems to develop in people who tend to blush and flush very easily, meaning they get really red cheeks with exercise or even without, just like a lot of of reddening of the cheeks. There's no actual cure for ocular rosacea, but medications and a good eye care routine can help control the signs and symptoms. The main cause of ocular rosacea. Well, it's really interesting. There are so many causes of rosacea. There are so many things that impact how your rosacea expresses itself, when it gets worse, when it gets better. And so I think there's really a lot to that, but we're gonna go through those causes. Now the signs and symptoms of ocular rosacea can precede the skin symptoms, meaning you can have the eye symptoms first, you can have your eye symptoms along with your skin symptoms, or you might never have ocular rosacea, even if you have skin rosacea. But the symptoms of having ocular rosacea can include redness of your eyes, burning of your eyes, itching, watering, feeling like your eyes are dry or gritty. We call that feeling sometimes foreign body sensation. That means it feels like there's something in your eye all the time. You can also have just blurred vision. In fact, oftentimes early on in ocular rosacea and dry eye syndrome, my patients will just have fluctuating and blurred vision. Like if your vision gets better every single time you blink, that's typically a tear film issue and maybe due to dry eye. You can also have sensitivity to light, which we call photophobia. Photophobia is just, um, gosh, like, really sensitive to the light when you weren't before. And that can happen as the initial sign of dry eye. Again, a poor tear film can cause some of these symptoms. You can also have really dilated small blood vessels on the white part of your eye that are visible when you look in the mirror. So if you're looking at your conjunctiva or the white part of your eye, the sclera, and you're seeing more redness than before, it can be a sign of ocular rosacea. You can also have the same thing on your eyelids. If you look really, really, really close at your eyelids, which might be difficult, but you can see little red blood vessels cropping up along that lid margin. Those are called telangiectasias and are pretty indicative of ocular rosacea. You also might have ocular rosacea if you have recurrent eye or eyelid infections, like having lots of pink eye, conjunctivitis all the time. You have blepharitis, swollen lids, red lids, irritation. Um, or even chalasia coming back over and over and over. Chalasia and styes, which I've done like honestly a thousand videos on, but everybody searches it, so there you go. I, I don't think they let you link 20 videos, but I've done a million videos on styes. So the severity of the ocular rosacea symptoms though doesn't always match the severity of the skin symptoms. So sometimes my patients will have worse dry eye and ocular rosacea and sort of deny that they even have any skin symptoms at all or vice versa. I have patients with really bad skin symptoms and no eye symptoms, or I also have patients that sort of tend to have both, right? Now let's talk about triggers for ocular rosacea because there's many things that have been pointed at in terms of causes and triggers. We don't know the exact cause. Um, just like with skin rosacea, we really don't know but it can be due to one or more factors. It can be due to heredity, environmental factors, there can be bacterial involvement or you know loss of skin barrier issues with the microbiome on the skin, blocked glands in the eyelids, eyelid, eyelash mites, so we're talking about demodex mites. Again, I did a whole video on those, but they have been pointed as being part of the root cause of 
rosacea at times. There's some research that has shown a possible link between skin rosacea and Helicobacter pylori bacteria, which is the same bacteria that causes gastrointestinal infections and has been looked at in terms of causing ulcers as well. There's certainly something to the whole gut, skin, brain axis. You know, they talk about sort of that microbiome connection. So that's been pointed as well as a potential cause of rosacea. There's a number of factors that can aggravate or trigger skin rosacea and they can aggravate or trigger ocular rosacea as well. So we're talking about things like eating hot foods, spicy foods and beverages, alcohol, dairy, sunlight, wind or temperature extremes, even emotions like stress, anger or embarrassment strenuous exercise, hot baths or saunas. A patient who has a um, sauna, I just said it. Yeah, like a dry sauna at his house. And I can tell when I'm doing his IPL and he's been in that sauna because he'll have sort of like rosaceous worsened. We see more telangiectasias, more blood vessels popping up. So there's other risk factors as well. Ocular rosacea is common in people with skin rosacea, obviously, that makes sense. Although you can have it without the skin being involved. And skin rosacea affects more women than men, although it affects both. And ocular rosacea affects men and women equally. I don't know if that's so true. I think it's also fair to say like, you know, my next sentence is, well, it's also more common in fair skinned people. And I think, you know, we would probably, most of us would agree we see rosacea more in fair skinned people. But I think unfortunately, sometimes when you get up into the fits types four, five, and six, because of skin tone, maybe it's not as easy to recognize. Certainly, you're gonna recognize those vascular changes, um, even those acneic changes, the redness, you're gonna see it on really fair skin. You're not gonna see it as easily on darker skin types. And so it may be underrepresented in the fits types four, five, and six. So in terms of complications and what does it actually do? So ocular rosacea can affect the surface of your eye, especially your cornea, your tear film, particularly if you end up having dry eyes from the evaporation of the tears. So rosacea tends to affect sebaceous glands. Meibomian glands are derived from sebaceous glands and they secrete oil. My patients with ocular rosacea have poor oil within their meibomian glands and then they have all these telangiectasias on their lid margin. It's a chronic progressive thing dry eye is. So in 86% of dry eye has been shown to have an, a meibomian gland dysfunction component. We know that having poor oil gives you poor tears. We know that having poor tears and not having the oil to coat and protect your tears leads to chronic inflammation of the entire ocular surface. We also know from Toyos's work that telangiectasias on your eyelids, on your face even, are associated with an increased level of interleukin 17 and six on the ocular surface. And that's the whole pathophysiology of why IPL works because IPL reduces telangiectasias on your eyelids, on your face itself, and because you're reducing those, you're reducing inflammation on the ocular surface. And so ocular rosacea, it's a very convoluted, like process, but basically it's an issue with these glands. You don't have good oil glands. If you don't have good oil glands, you don't have good tears in general. That can lead to an evaporation of the aqueous component of your tears. It then leads to changes in tear chemistry, right? So now we have tears that have a different osmolarity than they should, a different concentration of all kinds of different things, proteins, there's inflammation present. So again, it's like this whole inflammatory cascade that then can result in issues with your tear film, which, oh, by the way, your tear film's job is to make your vision clear and be the first refractive surface and protect your cornea. And so now your cornea, which is really, really, really full of nerve fibers, is sustaining damage as well, epithelial damage. The epithelium is that top layer of the cornea. And so that cornea become irritated. Now there's other things that happen too with long-term ocular rosacea. I have a patient in his 80s that has had ocular rosacea his whole life. Obviously treatments were really not there for most of his life. And so at this point he has a lot of what's called trichiasis. So lashes that grow the wrong way. Now what does that have to do with your oil glands? Well, if you have poor oil glands and inflammation within the eyelid over time, and I'm not taking this from a study, this is just something I've noticed clinically, the lashes change, right? So the lash follicle seems to be affected too by chronic low-grade inflammation of the eyelid margin 
dropping out of my Bohemian glands, um, glands that don't move at all, that are dying out. Now the lash follicle, which is adjacent, is changing as well. We can get misdirected lashes. We can get lashes that are falling out. And misdirected lashes can poke your cornea. I'll show you a picture of one here. It's painful. Your cornea is full of all of these nerve endings. It's potentially already degraded from a poor tear, tear film from ocular rosacea. And now on top of it, you got lashes growing the wrong way and it's poking your cornea. So anyway, that's kind of what happens to the ocular surface and why it's so, so important to intervene and try and get better oil secretion, but we'll get to that. So let's get back to like, what can you do? The best diet for ocular rosacea is really the best diet for rosacea in general. Avoiding spicy foods, hot beverages, alcohol, things like that. There are many, many, many reported dietary triggers. And so you really have to individualize that. I would say you'd almost have to take a diary of when your rosacea is worse and try to figure out what your triggers are so that you can um, identify those in a directed fashion rather than just never eating the things you love just because I said that they might be a trigger. Now there are some foods that can improve rosacea. So fresh fruits, an important aspect of treating rosacea with food is to try to remember to pick foods that have anti-inflammatory properties. This is an inflammatory disease. So fresh organic fruits not only have anti-inflammatory properties, but also contain a high amount of antioxidants. So you know, things we love like blueberries, pomegranate, all of these are great to help prevent damage on a cellular level. Another type of food is fatty fish. So I'll link to the Ziegler's fish oil product here. Fatty fish also contain anti-inflammatory properties because they have high levels of zinc and omega-3 fatty acids. Both zinc and omega-3 fatty acids help to inhibit pro-inflammatory pathways and help block inflammation. Omega-3 fatty acids can also help to prevent dry eye symptoms in people with ocular rosacea. So this is a huge go-to. One great source of omega-3 fatty acids are flax seeds and walnuts in your diet, but it's often difficult to get enough. And so again, linking Ziegler's product, supplementing with a high quality pharmaceutical grade fish oil is a great idea. I love PRN pharmaceuticals. I love Nordic Naturals and I love the hydrate brand omega-3 as well. Turmeric is a spice. It's derived from a plant out of India, curcuma longa. I don't know how to say these things, but basically the plant's known for its anti-inflammatory properties. One theory is that an active compound within turmeric called curcumin contributes to its anti-inflammatory capabilities. You will see turmeric pop up in dry eye supplements. There's a number of supplements that contain it. Next we have fermented foods. So it was found that bacterial overgrowth in the gastrointestinal tract may worsen rosacea and that patients with rosacea are more prone to gastrointestinal infections. That's that gut, skin, brain, health connection, right? I'm an eye doctor, that's not really my area, but there's something to that. There was a study that found that when gastrointestinal imbalances were treated with probiotics, the severity of the participants' rosacea was reduced. In addition to probiotic supplements, fermented foods are full of probiotics that may be beneficial to keep gut bacteria in balance to help prevent the infections and the rosacea flare-ups. So examples of delicious and nutritious fermented foods would include like miso, kefir, kombucha, love kombucha, would also recommend high fiber vegetables. So bland vegetables can also help to improve rosacea by helping to prevent bacterial overgrowth. Vegetables like leafy greens, asparagus, and legumes like lentils can help to create an environment that allows for good gut bacteria to grow and diversify. You also want to avoid starches and refined sugars, which will help to prevent gut bacterial overgrowth. So how do you get diagnosed with this? Well, there's no specific tests or procedures to diagnose ocular rosacea per se. Usually eye doctors are making a diagnosis based upon your symptoms, your medical history, and then just kind of looking at your eyes and eyelids and the skin of your face. I would say for me as a dry eye specialist, a dead giveaway is the quality of the um, mybum and then the telangiectasias on the lid margin point me in that direction. Ocular rosacea can usually be controlled with medication and home care, but it doesn't cure the condition, and so it tends to be very chronic. Your doctor might prescribe things like oral antibiotic. We'll use things like tetracycline, doxycycline, erythromycin, and minocycline. 
These are antibiotics used in low doses. It is not for the antibiotic effect, it's actually for the secondary effect of thinning out the oils. And so many patients with ocular rosacea will find themselves, especially on doxycycline, and doxycycline over time can help the oil glands. In my opinion, you also need the oil glands to be unblocked and expressed but I digress. For a severe disease, you might take an antibiotic for a longer time. So I've had patients before that took doxycycline for months, if not years. Of course, working on your diet is really important. Healthy foods, healthy fats, probiotic rich foods, identifying and tracking the foods and drinks that you consume that seem to trigger or soothe your symptoms can be a really good move as well. So in terms of ocular rosacea, doxycycline is not it. I think it's really important to control what's going on on your face. It's really important to have an eye wash and a face wash that control your bacterial populations and your demodex populations. So I'll link the Ziegler's tea tree oil washes and eyelid scrubs. I think that's critically important. Doxy can be very helpful. Low dose naltrexone can be helpful as well. Dr. Toyos makes a video about it. I plan to make a video about it in the next few months. And more than anything, IPL and light-based therapies along with expression of your meibomian glands. When patients have ocular rosacea, they don't make good oil. They make sort of thicker oil. They have all these blood vessels. Nothing works like IPL works. I, Intense Pulse Light was founded or found by Dr. Toyos when he was treating rosacea patients, finding that their dry eye got better. At least that's what I've always heard. That is the mechanism. The mechanism is that it's attracted to pigment, it's attracted to blood vessels, it takes care of blood vessels, it gets them gone, thereby reducing inflammation at the ocular surface. It also helps control bacterial levels. It also helps kill demodex mites. IPL works so well for ocular rosacea. We also have the other light-based therapies like low-level light therapy, and then expressing the glands. If you have oil that's been backed up for 30 years, if you have oil glands that are going away, literally shortening, appear to be empty, don't appear, appear to be there anymore, you've got to do something to wake them back up if they're not already gone. So, you know, things like gland probing and expressing the glands is critically important. So that's it about ocular rosacea. I've also made another video about ocular rosacea. I've also made tons and tons and tons of videos. So you can go down the rabbit hole, please do, on my bony gland dysfunction and demodex and all of it. It's a good time. So I hope I answered all your questions about ocular rosacea, treatment, triggers, diet, and causes. And even though it can't be cured, it can be managed most often very successfully. So make sure to find yourself a dry specialist you know, like, and trust, and leave me comments below if I can fill in anything else about ocular rosacea. Thanks so much for watching today. Class is dismissed, and I'll see you next time.